Hey there, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Dr. Gwen from the Dr. Gwen International Inc. and host of the iTunes show, the Dr. Gwen Podcast Show. This afternoon, I want to be talking to you about you being all things to all people. Whether it's in your business or whether it's in your personal life, I think there is a point in time when we all have to stop and take stock of where we're putting our fingers, where are we putting our efforts, where are we putting our attention? Are we being all things to all people? I believe that that is the main source of stress in our lives. So today, what I want to do is to give you an activity that you can do by yourself in a quiet place that will help you to bring some type of focus and attention to you and to what is important to you so that you stop running every direction, stop being completely all stressed out, and just continue to be centered, calm, and purposeful about the way you're living your life every single day. Now, what drove this conversation is right now I am on one of those take a break moments where I'm in the relax, refreshing, reviving mode. I'm not necessarily pursuing work. Occasionally, I understand that, that this is important for my whole well-being and for my psyche, that I take time off and take a break. And that contributes, no doubt, to my continuous feeling of success and happiness and well-being in my life. Aside from that, though, when I'm back in the gear, there are some things that really help me to stay focused and to continue to feel purposeful and fulfilled about my life and about the things that I'm doing every single day. And that is because I cue in and I pay attention to five important elements, which I'm going to share with you today and give you some ideas on what you can do and a resource that will help you to get this information together so that you can make full use of it. And so what I want to do now is to mention that many people have this whole idea of fragmenting themselves. They are mom, they are dad, they are leader, they are student, they are spiritual beings, they are social beings, and yet there is not a single point when all of those little pieces converge to be just you, just me. And so the result of that is that you feel frazzled and you're torn, and you're going in a million different directions, and your life is completely fragmented, and you feel as though you're going to blow your tops, because how in the world can you manage to be all of these things all at the same time? And I have some great news for you. You don't, because the whole idea of this whole thing is integrating yourself. Now, you've probably heard me talk about this before. It's really important that you integrate who you are being. I talk about this experience when I was training to be an introduction leader for a large organization, an inter international organization. And in that group, there were many people from different parts of the U.S. and all in a group. And we're being trained, and so we had this Saturday event once per month, it felt like. And this was a seven-month program that we all are being trained for. And I remembered how simple that event was for me. Now, I'm not bragging, and this is no reflection on anyone in the group. I'm just saying, for me, it was a simple task. And there is a reason why that was the case, where I looked around and there were many people who were stressing in the group, who were falling off of the cart, who were not able to pick themselves back up, who dropped out of the program because it was hard. 
it was intense. It required a lot of commitment on our parts to get through it. But I clearly remember that during that whole process of learning and integrating those elements in my life, that I combined everything that I was learning into one capsule for me, for my life. In other words, I didn't see this single other event as something else to do. All of the information that we were being exposed to were being integrated completely into my life. So it felt like it was still me. I was living my life and I was living my life from that angle. See, my whole intent and desire is to be an inspirational being. Someone whom when others come in my presence, they can feel a difference. They can feel as though they are uplifted. And this particular event contributed to me in such a huge way in that manner that I continued to feel that way as I was doing all of the different activities that were required for me to be finally certified and to be declared to be an introduction leader. Now, the thing of it is that funny, when I started the program, I had no desire to have that designation. I just wanted to go through the training for what I feel the training would do for me and my personal life. But after the first weekend and listening to so many others who had gone through the crucible of being an introduction leader, I thought, I think I want to do that. And so the second weekend, I made my mind up that I was going to do it. And you know, from that decision, I became the first one to, in my region to be declared an introduction leader. Not because I was some super wonderful being. I think I am. But that wasn't the reason. I feel as though it was because this thing was completely interwoven into my personal life. And I felt that I was living my life me bringing me to that situation in all of its grandeur, in all of its downfall, whatever the circumstances were, it was me that was coming, all of me, integrated whole of me. And so I say all that to say this, that if you have something that you are pursuing in your life right now, and you feel as though you are being frazzled and torn apart, then stop and take a pause and ask yourself, how can you integrate this so that it feels like your regular living? Now, there are some prerequisites for this to happen because not all people have the same dreams and, and the same desires. I know you know that, right? We don't all want the same things in our lives. We don't all want the same circumstances to bless our paths. We all have different things that we are here to do and different things that are going to cause us to feel fulfilled. So for you, what is that for you? Despite what it is, there are in general five elements that every human being I feel needs to pay attention to so that he or she can come to grips with what is the most important thing for me, you, him or her, whoever it is. The first element is spirituality. Now, when I talk about spirituality, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about you being a religious person, going to church or to synagogue or anywhere else. I'm simply saying that you are a spiritual being. By virtue of your interactions with nature, the things that are in nature, the many elements that are around you, even the things that you feel are lifeless, by virtue of your interacting with that, 
there are some interchanges that are happening energetically wise, whether or not you agree with it or whether or not you recognize it. So the thing to do is to become conscious of those things that are around you. Get in a quiet space, a communicative space, and communicate from your heart directly with those things. Just portray love. Just the whole essence of love is a spiritual thing. And the whole essence of love brings about that deep manifestation of togetherness, that deep manifestation of unity with you, the people in your world, the nature in that you're surrounded with, the natural stuff, the things of nature that you're surrounded with, all coinciding as one beat, one heartbeat, one force. There is such great beauty in living your life this way, just realizing that, hey, you know what? I'm not alone. This whole, all of these elements are here to support me and my well-being. So the first thing is, ask yourself, what is important to you on a spiritual level? Is it that you are feeling this immense feeling of joy and love and peace every day? And if that is your personal mission, then make a commitment to live your life doing something that's going to enhance that commitment, that feeling of what's important to you. So if peace is, is what it is, maybe you want to do some meditation or just walking out there in nature. Maybe bare feet in the grass, not if there's chemicals in it, but just rolling in the dirt, walking out there, listening to the birds, going for a walk on the trail. I love my morning walks in the sunlight on the trail amongst the trees, you can hear them rustling in the wind and the birds are singing and then there's the duck in the pond and all the little creatures are flitting by. And it's such a wonderful, amazing thing to just be out there in that space. So commit, maybe, maybe you're just gonna commit to be out there in nature so you can experience this peace. Now the second, element that you want to be aware of is your finance. We talk about finance, we talk about your career and your business. What is that for you? Not just that, your investments, all the money things that you need to get in order. What are you thinking is important for you in that area of finances? Is it that you want to have certain number of investment properties? Is it that you want to have a business that's going to serve this need? What is it? You've got to get in a quiet space and reflect there for yourself. What is it that is really important to you regarding finances, either career, business investments, or any other money deal? Deal with that. Figure out what your commitments are. What are you committed to doing? If it is an investment property or maybe trading options or stocks, whatever it is, make a commitment, write it down, and write the incremental steps so that you can get to it. So that it's not just something that is written on a piece of paper, that looks good, okay? So write it down, your finances. The third piece is your relationships. And this includes either your romantic relationships or the other relationships with your family. This I include as family time. What is important to you? Figure that out. If you don't figure out what's important to you, you're going to be running everywhere, all over the place. It's going to drive you nuts, as you already have already figured out. So what is important to you? Write that down. And if committed to your spouse or your family, 
is the commitment, then write down the steps that you're going to take every day to make that commitment become a reality. See? So that relationship is the third one. And then the fourth one is your health. Wow, now we, nothing, none of the others really matter if you don't have health. Because you know what? Your health affects your spirituality. If you're feeling sick and in pain, you can't enjoy the things in nature. There's no way. You can't. If you're feeling sick and in pain, then your finances are probably strapped because you're on medication or you're throwing your money to the doctors or for health prescriptions, whatever it is, and that may be draining you. On top of that, you can't even enjoy your finances if you are not healthy. And if you are not healthy, ah, you probably will be such a heavy weight in your relationships. You know, you won't be that bubbly person that everybody wants to be around or that sage because you'll always be thinking about that pain that's going to bring that weight in your life. So your health is important. You don't have to be a marathon runner or a body lifter, someone who works out and has his or her body sculpted. You don't have to do that. But you can take regular walks or run in the sunlight when it's cold outside and the snow is going. Do that running inside. Run on the spot if you have to, if you don't have a treadmill. But make a commitment to do something. You have to. And what are you going to do every day to contribute to that commitment? Write it down. And then the fifth one is your social life. And there's some the spirituality, I would say, which is number one, is spiritual and personal development. This one is your social life. Now, not everybody wants to have lots of friends and tons of people to hang out with. Some people feel more refreshed when they're away from people. Some people feel more refreshed when they're around people. Figure out what it is for you. It it probably is not, if you're introverted, it's probably not that you are always going to be in here by yourself. Probably not. And if you're extroverted, it probably is not that you're going to be out there with everybody all the time. I think there is a balance. Find some time to do something that you find to be social, whether it's going to the theater, the movie theater, or going to on your computer to watch Netflix or something. Make a commitment for something that's going to bring some fun and socialness to your life so you can enjoy it. So now once you figure out these five things, five areas that are important to you, and you really have to get in a quiet place and really be quiet and think, because this is not intellectual stuff. This is heart stuff. So you're getting into your heart to figure out what are the things that are important to me. When you've got that figured out, my friends, put it in your calendar. Yes, it is important. Write it in there and make it something that you do every day. Now, when you do that, all of these five areas cover all areas of your life. For the most part, it does. And so you don't have any excuse to be running here and there because now you know what your commitments are in life. And now you have to look at everything, examine everything that you are now doing and clean the house. Throw out the stuff that don't align with this commitment. You cannot be all things to all people. If you want to have a happy, fulfilled, and refreshing an exuberant life, you've got to do the things that are important to you. And once they're important to you, the energy will come for you to find yourself doing it every day. 
And you will also find that the joy and the happiness will quickly follow in pursuit. So my friends, I hope that this video has given you some things to think about and that you will now go and figure out the five things, five areas in life that are important to you and those areas that are not coinciding with your commitment, throw them out. And so also, if anyone comes and says, can you do this for me? You know what your commitments are, examine in your heart whether they are your commitments or not, what you're being asked to do. And if not, the word N-O is a beautiful word. It's a freeing word. Just say, no, I have other commitments right now. I'm sorry, I won't be able to do it. And or you can find someone else who you can delegate it to, to follow through with that task for you if it's something that you can't do. Now, my friends, I hope, I know if you're on the job, some of these things may apply and they may not. If you have a job that you can't fit any of that in, then it's probably time for you to look for something else because your fulfillment and your happiness is ultimate. It's most important. You're not here in this world to struggle and to have a hard life and to make things work. Oh, I'm going to make it work. No, you are here to have fun, to create, and to enjoy your life. If life is not going that way for you, then you ought to spend some time to think about what you're doing and toss anything that doesn't align. And so my friends, this is Dr. Gwen, empowering lives to live purposefully and passionately and transforming and skyrocketing business profits from the inside out. Bye.